Hello everyone and welcome to this session on Plagiarism and Referencing by Newcastle University's Library. My name's Phoebe and I work for Newcastle University as an Outreach Ambassador. I've also just recently graduated from there in summer 2020 with a degree in Linguistics. So firstly we're going to talk about plagiarism. What exactly is plagiarism? Well at its most simple, plagiarism is copying the work and ideas of other people and then claiming that it's your own. If you're caught plagiarising, the exam board may fail you on that exam and potentially your other A-levels too. Some examples of plagiarism could be cutting and pasting from the internet, copying work from other students or using the information and or ideas from a book or journal without seeing where you got these from. There are some simple steps that you can take to avoid plagiarism. For example, you could keep a record of everything that you read as you go. You could use your own words and ideas where possible. And if you do use other people's words or ideas, you can make sure that you acknowledge all material used in your references, which we'll go into later on. So now on the referencing. Referencing is recording the information that you've used in such a way that whoever marks your work can find the original source. So there's lots of different referencing styles, but the most important thing is to remember to be consistent. A top tip is that you should always ask your teacher which referencing style you should be using in your work. So how exactly do you reference? Well, there's two parts to referencing. There's in-text citation, you can see here, and a reference list, or bibliography, as it's also known. An in-text citation is where you refer to the source in the actual text of your document. You also need to give full details of that source in your reference list or bibliography at the end of your essay. For example, if you want to include a quote, opinion or conclusion that you've read, you might include phrases like, Elton argues that, Hawkins concludes that, or you might want to include quotations, images, charts, etc. This is seen as sound academic practice. You don't need to ever cite your own words or ideas, nor any material that's regarded as common fact. For example, the sea is blue or the grass is green. Another top tip is if you're unsure of referencing how to reference, always ask your teacher if you're unsure that if the way that you're referencing is correct or not. And also keep a list of any material that you've used that are not your own ideas. In my experience, this makes referencing a whole lot easier later on. So moving on to a reference list of bibliography. At the end of your essay, you'll have to include a list of references and of resources that you've used. This is called a reference list, which is a detailed list laid out in specific order of any material that you've referred to in your essay. Alternatively, you could be asked to include a bibliography, and this is the same as a reference list, but also includes your wider reading too. Another top tip is to remember to go to our sixth form study skills web website um, for information on how to reference different resources. So thank you so much for taking the time to view this video. Of course, more information can be found on our sixth form study skills website, which can be found here. And if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to email us. Thank you very much.